going on, YouTube? Uh, first of all, I want to start this video by apologizing that I haven't been making any other videos lately. Uh, I had one more unboxing video that I had took, but it is stuck on my desktop hard drive that I cannot access right now. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to post that until I get the right connection and yada yada, blah blah, blah computer stuff. Anyways, just wanted to let everyone know that I made it here to beautiful tropical Queensland. This is a giant mango tree. And here's the house I'm residing in now. This house is actually on stilts, sort of. It's well off the ground. The first floor is completely open. I don't know what you see. But yes, this is the underside of the house. And that's what we call the spider closet because there's so many spiders in there. Um, but yeah, I am in Australia, and again, I'm sorry for not posting any videos or anything. I've been super busy, well, I can't say I've been super busy, actually. I really haven't. I've just been lazy since I got here, because it basically just feels like I'm on vacation. Uh, I flew out of Chicago O'Hare at, on February 18th, at around 5 p.m. It was a little hectic because a couple days before then, I think the night before, Chicago got something like 8 inches of snow. So my flight was delayed, and I was stressing out about it because it was looking like I had to stay in L.A. for something like 19, 20 hours. It's a little ridiculous, but, you know, around noon, because it was about a three-hour drive to Chicago, or to the airport anyways, and we looked at noon, and the flight wasn't delayed, so we had to hurry and left. And, well, I made it. Everything went smoothly. I made it through customs and all that just fine. I didn't bring any of my stack with me because... I'm planning on going back to visit the States in July, so th because that's when my family's going on vacation, and I wanted to join them for that, because we do a yearly vacation thing, all of us, so I still am part of that. Anyways, just a little few things around the yard, like, there's so many common house plants that I've seen in the States that just grow out here like normal, and there's palm trees, and, you know, this is actually a locust tree. This is interesting, because these are... This is a tree that's growing over here from the neighbor's yards, wherever there. But these are what inspired the boomerangs, uh, and the aboriginals. So these were technically the first boomerangs, these little seed pods. Right there. Yeah, this, this is a giant mango tree. It's gonna fruit in about three months, so. Unfortunately, fruit bats, or mega bats, I think is a technical term, gigabat, I don't, I don't even know. But most of these, most of the mangoes get eaten by animals and birds and stuff like that. But a few of them every once in a while we get to we get to pick and but there are mango trees that go around here there's the passion fruit tree in the neighbor's yard over there i think there's you know citrus trees all over it's crazy it's a lot different than you know apple trees pear trees and peaches and stuff that i'm used to growing in illinois and it was a stark contrast when i got here because when i left it was about something like 15 degrees in my hometown and in Chicago, which is about, I think it's minus 7 Celsius. But when I got here, it was something like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it was 35, 36 Celsius, and it was so humid because they got a foot of rain, or 300 millimeters of rain, uh, over the previous couple of days. But anyways, I don't want to ramble in too much here. I'm going to head on upstairs, and... Well, actually, first I want to say that I'm just here on a visitor's visa, one-year visitor's visa. It would only cost $130 Australian uh, to be able to stay in this country for a year. My plane ticket I got for a really good deal. I was looking and looking. It looked like it was going to cost me between $1,400 and $1,600, even booking, you know, two or three months out. But then randomly I checked, and one plane ticket that was five weeks out only cost me $1,050. And I was like, oh, I got to do this. And I made that as soon as I... Well, sure that I'm getting my passport. And getting your passport is always something I recommend. Just get it get it done early. For those of you that haven't gotten your passport, just get it done because you never know when an opportunity is going to come up. But, anyways. Yeah. Because I can't really buy any silver or gold right now, and, like I said, I left my stack in the States, I don't really have a lot to show you. So instead, I'm just going to show you what Australian currency looks like because I know lots of silver stackers reside in America. And, well... I don't know if a lot of you have seen Australian currency, so let me go ahead and show that to you. Anyways, back inside now. Here's just showing off the uh, the coinage of Australia, which is something I 
It took me a little bit to adjust to because it's so different. Here's a $1 coin. With the queen on the front. I think they started making these in 84. Because, uh, well, they used to have, you know, like, three pence and sort of British-based currency like that. But that was until 1960, I don't know, the early 60s. Middle, middle 60s, I think. So coin roll hunting, unfortunately, isn't something where I can get a lot of, you know, prospects out of. However, 50 cent pieces like this. Uh, one from 1966, I I think, I'm not sure, but they have round edges, and those are those are made with 80% silver, I believe. Don't quote me on that though. But I don't have any U.S. coins to compare these to. However, I can tell you that this the 20 cent piece, this is this uh, pretty much the same size as a U.S. half dollar. Uh, the 10 cent pieces are the same size as a quarter, and the 5 cent pieces are the same size as a nickel. Now, they don't have pennies here. They don't have one cent pieces. All, all denominations are rounded up to five cents because they got rid of one cent pieces quite a while ago. But, as you can see, there's five cent coin. I think that's a hedgehog. I don't, I'm not positive on what that is, what that is there. I haven't looked it up. But, it's interesting because you can also see the queen get older. This is... This is a fairly nice condition for how old it is, 20 cent piece. It's got a ductile platypus on it. This has the Australian coat of arms. Now, this is a $1 coin. The cool thing about $1 coins is they have plenty of commemorative ones. I think it's over two dozen. So there's you know at least plenty of those to collect. However, they're not really worth a lot. Now there's one kind of the Australian dollar that is, that's an error. It is printed or not printed, it is, it has the front of the 10 cent piece, which is slightly smaller as you can see there. So those are, those can be worth into the hundreds of dollars. However, other than that, there's not a lot to collect in terms of rarities because, well, the currency is so new. There's a two dollar coin. An aboriginal fellow on it. Uh, I believe he is supposed to be like the first one to have met the settlers. But, again, I'm not sure. There's a lot I have to learn about Australia before you know, I can start saying things like I'm a local. <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's pretty much the coins there. Uh, I do plan on taking some classes and stuff here. Uh, just to learn more about, you know, my new country of residence. But anyways, I'm going to move aside and show you. This is what Australian money looks like. It's colorful, yes. It's a lot more interesting than U.S. coins and or U.S. dollars. Now, the smallest note is the $5 note, as you can see, because they have one $2 coins. Now, here's a very good, oops, a very good condition one. Very shiny. 2013, I think. Yes. Very nice. Anyways, this is a $5 note. And you can see Lizzie on the front. And cool design on the back. This is a $10 note. And again, I honestly can't say I really know who any of these people are. Because, again, I have a lot to learn, and I'm more than willing to learn. And it's cool because, you know, the notes, they have clear things on the back, and there's there's some cool designs on the under black light. I'm not exactly sure what, though, because I haven't gotten a look. And there's also microprinting. I can't see it, but right here, all, all it says is $10, $10, $10. All microprinting right there. And, like I said, there's a $10 note. This is a $20 note. And they don't call them bills here. Uh, every time I've made the mistake of calling them, can I have a twenty dollar bill or can I have a hundred dollar bill or whatever, they they pretty much say a oh, hundred dollar note, note, eh. but yeah, there's a twenty. And this stuff is made out of plastic, actually. It's you know you get it wet and and it's just pretty much the same as if it were dry. It's not like American currency, uh, and it lasts longer too. And also because it's plastic, they have machines at the bank and the ATMs that, that iron them out and make them perfectly flat so they don't stay wrinkled or anything. These are 50s. Yes, we've got quite a few of them. Now, I, like I said, I won't be buying any more silver or gold until I can get a job and I can't get a job until I get my visa upgraded and I can't get my visa upgraded until my buddy gets a job and he said he was willing to pay for that uh, because, well, yeah, it'd be nice to have another source of income in this household. My wages here are quite a bit higher than they are in the States. I was working a minimum wage job at a retail outlet. Um, it was just a grocery store. And I was, you know, making 
by the time I left it was nine nine sixty an hour. And I don't know if I showed you the back. But yes. It's making nine sixty an hour, but here, uh a retail job doing the same thing, I'd be making about twenty two, twenty three dollars an hour. <laughs> or more. You know, we on Sundays it's time and a half pay, I believe. Uh and overtime as well. So at that point I could be making almost forty dollars an hour. But yeah, this is a hundred dollar note. This is very nice. Although I was the first person to bend it. I think I bent bent one of the corners there, right there. Yes. But <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting because they are all different lengths, so that blind people can actually tell how much money they're paying for. And you know, here's a, a bit of American money I had to spend on food at the airport. <clears throat> And as you can see, they're all the same size, and they're relatively the same color, so people who have, you know, vision troubles can't exactly tell what they're paying for. And when I when I showed my housemates American currency, they were like, well, they looked at it, and they're, they're like, they're all the same size. How do blind people know what they're paying? And I'm like, I honestly can't answer that. I've never thought about it, and I don't think it's a, something that a lot of people consider. I guess they use, you know, credit cards or something? But I, I honestly don't know. It's... It was kind of a difficult question to answer because, well, I hadn't thought about it, but, you know, they obviously did, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, just a, that's just a little something I can show you guys. I'll, I'll have more video updates and things, what I'm doing. I'll be able to share, uh, share status updates when I get a job and when I can, you know, start buying silver and gold again. And hopefully, well, I will be able to buy a lot more once, once I start getting a bit of income here. And I'll be able to buy more than I was in the States, even though even though I was still living, you know, at home with my mother. Being 19 years old and moving to another country on my own, it's quite a feat, honestly. And I'm pretty proud of it. But right now, I've got enough money to, to spend on food and stuff for a few months. So that'll last me a while. But, yeah. Anyways, like I said, I'll keep you guys updated when I can start buying silver and gold again, I'll, I'll be able to sh share some, you know, cool coins that I, that I just happened to come across, because you can find New Zealand currency here. New Zealand is basically Australian, Australia's version of Canada, as they like to say, or as I like to say anyways. But, yeah, <laughs> that's that. Anyways, this weekend I'm going to be camping in the rainforest at Plume Range National Park. It's going to be awesome, so I'll be able to share to, I'll be able to get videos and stuff and show you some of the wildlife and just the rainforest sounds and all that jazz because it's definitely a lot different here than it was in Illinois where I came from <laughs> it's not a frozen wasteland for half the year and it's not you know just endless cornfields for the rest of it it's actually trees and wildlife and <laughs> even though we're in the middle of the city it still smells fresh because of all the plant life around the neighborhood because it's a fairly old neighborhood but <sighs> this video has already gone for on for so long Anyways, I'm going to catch you guys later. <laughs> See you next time. Yeah.